Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Um, thank you, Dr. Omar, for the presentation, for the introduction. And it's my pleasure to be here representing uh, in a cardiology conference. Um, thank you for inviting me. And it's my pleasure. Um, well, Dr. Ramdi made it easy on me to, uh, for, uh, for my presentation. In fact, he uh, um, uh, um, took the role of the uh, surgeons, probably proving some, some, some uh, part of my presentation. That uh, surgery, in some of those cases, uh, may be beneficial, although it carries a uh, high risk. Um, oops. How do I, do I go back? Sorry. Yeah. Um, historically, if we go back to history, um, coronary artery bypass surgery started in, well, uh, let's say it was standardized in 1964, although there were attempts of uh, uh, incomplete revascularization before that. Um, so it continued. Um, uh, surgeons uh, were the, uh, let's say, ringmasters uh, uh, at that time until angioplasty was introduced in 1977. Uh, at that time, um, and during early introduction of angioplasty, in fact, the surgeons um, were kept on uh, uh, standby. Not only this, but the, uh, even the uh, operating theater was kept standby. So they would abandon all surgeon, uh, surgeries until the angioplasty is uh, completed. Uh, just because it was at the, at the early stages and um, the, um, the complications were high and 50% of the patients were taken to the OR and the 50% of, of the other, the other 50% in fact had, uh, had to have um, uh, relook angiograms. And then it continued until um, bare metal stent uh, was introduced in 1986 and then later on uh, uh, drug diluting stents. Uh, concurrent with this, the role of the surgeons uh, regressed. Um, they were uh, the masters of the field and then regressed to uh, probably, uh, well, even, even the OR was, um, uh, in fact, when I, was, when I started cardiac surgery uh, in the 90s, we used to keep the OR, although stents were introduced at that time, but we used to keep the OR uh, available for just in case uh, they had complications. But now the complications rate is very low and the um, um, emergency cabbage as a result of the complications uh, uh, is around 0.3%. Um, and um, w with this, um, f further adma advancement, uh, not only PCIs were done, uh, were not, were, did, not have a, uh, did not require surgical su support, but also were done in facilities other than uh, uh, facilities that, that, had, uh, that have uh, surgical uh, 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 service. So that show, shows how we, uh, the, the surgical requirement or uh, uh, support for uh, angioplasties uh, went down. How can I, sorry. So our role is um, uh, if we talk about, uh, uh, or we always talk about uh, heart team. So we're part of the heart team, despite um, that we're not required immediately, but I, th I think as, as Dr. Ramdi mentioned, a heart team is important. If they're available um, during the day, it's good to discuss the cases and decide w uh, what way should the patient go. Should the patient go uh, proceed with the prime PCI? The majority would. The majority probably would not need uh, a surgeon to, uh, to make a decision. But some of those cases, as uh, mentioned earlier, uh, multivessel disease, left main, uh, diffuse disease that may not be amenable to uh, a primary PCI, um, it's good to discuss them with the surgeons. Um, and of course, we're required for emergency uh, uh, surgery. Uh, even on some of those cases, in fact, 50% of the cases present with uh, multivessel disease. So um, these may need uh, uh, surgery, but they could have planned surgery, not an emergency uh, cabbage. And of course, we deal with complications. I know the complication rate is very low, as I mentioned, um, uh, but still com complications occur. 
and uh, we deal with complications. And of course, we also support patients uh, post uh, primary PCI with mechanical circulatory uh, uh, support. In fact, it all de uh, depends on, uh, this is determined by the, uh, the serve or the, the system which is applied in the, in the hospital. We at the heart hospital, we in fact look after uh, mechanical circulatory support, especially ECMO. We, uh, we're, we're, called, we're uh, on call 24 hours, uh, seven days a week. Uh, for ECMO. So uh, whenever uh, there's uh, a need for ECMO, we're, we're uh, called for this. And even post-operative management, post-ECMO uh, management is carried out in our, uh, in our uh, uh, intensive care unit. Uh, can I go back uh, one slide? Yeah. Sorry. Back, please. Back. More, one more, yeah, okay. Well, as I said, indications for cabbage and uh, STEMI, if it is unsuccessful, uh, if uh, PCI is unsuccessful, which is uh, rare uh, nowadays, but uh, also uh, this, uh, this is the uh, first indication. And complications uh, of PCI, uh, dissections happen, perforations, and thrombosis. And uh, as a primary reperfusion strategy, uh, strategy especially those uh, stable patients with uh, left main or multivessel disease uh, and reduced uh, LV function, especially with uh, in patients with uh, diabetes mellitus. And we know that uh, these patients um, uh, do better with, uh, with surgery. Um, especially if they're stable and you could delay the operation. Um, I, I think uh, that that's also should be discussed in a, in a multidisciplinary team. Late presentation or recurrent ischemia, they could, they could benefit from uh, surgery, of course. Cardiogenic shock, life-threatening ventricular arrhythmias, and mechanical complications, of course. Some of the, although these are rate, rare, but uh, the, um, uh, these are surgical cases. Timing of surgery is important, as my, um, the previous uh, speaker uh, mentioned it. Um, so emergency operation should be done for patients who have ongoing ischemia, cardiogenic shock, failed PCI, or they have me mechanical complications. Stable patients, emergency me uh, means either salvage uh, surgeries and those who require the operations immediately or in, uh, in shock, or um, even within 24 hours to prepare patients until they have surgery. Stable patients, again, those, uh, it's uh, very controversial when to, to uh, operate in those cases. Uh, on one hand, you want to save the myocardium. On the other hand, you want to uh, reduce the complications uh, of early surgery. Um, so it's better that you delay the surgery. Uh, uh, within the, uh, let's say, two or three days uh, of surgery, of the presentation, the risk is very high. It's a, it approaches uh, 20 to 30 percent. But uh, later on, after three to four, to four days, the risk goes down to less than 10 percent. So it's, it's uh, very important. If you can delay the operation, uh, do that. Um, uh, but if you have to do it, you, you just have to take the risk. Uh, Technical considerations on the, some of those cases, um, again, timing is very important, so we need to minimize the schema time uh, by, although you, you, probably you need to stabilize the patient, but uh, minimize the ischemia time, you, you need, we need to do the operation within six hours of, uh, of the presentation. The, the, the less, the better, of course. Um, patients, some of the patients may require intraiotic balloon pump, um, from, some of them may require ECMO as the preparation for surgery or impeller. Uh, I just have a few cases. This is um, uh, of our experience. This is a 66-year-old male uh, presented with non-STEMI. Uh, he had uh, PCI to the LAD and circumflex, uh, and he had v uh, VF, uh, and then ROSC was achieved after two DC shocks. Uh, he had reloc angi uh, angio, he had patent arteries, uh, and, but he, had, he continued to have refractory uh, ventricular tachycardia. He was placed on, uh, on VA ECMO, uh, and VA ECMO was removed in five days and was exhibited in, in eight days. This is his, 
angiogram. I mean, it was success. Uh, uh, the um, the lesions were successfully uh, uh, stented, but the, the patient developed uh, 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 ventricular tachycardia. So he was placed in ECMO. That's that was our role in this case. Uh, we placed him on ECMO uh, until the myocardium recovered. He was put on antiarrhythmic medications, and then uh, a few days later, he uh, was explanted. Um, how can I go? I'm sure. Next slide, please. Anyway, this is a real look angiogram with the same patient. This is an, um, uh, another case, a 74-year-old uh, female patient who had non-STEMI. Uh, coronary angiogram uh, showed long circum. Uh, this was a high risk uh, non STEMI. Um, coronary angiogram showed long circumflex lesion. Uh, following stenting of the uh, circ lesion, this section occurred. Um, so, this is uh, her angiogram. Uh, as you may appreciate uh, this, the, the section, so we, uh, the procedure was deferred and we took her for surgery. Um, of course, these are difficult cases but with the uh, uh, diffuse uh, dissection. She had the operation and uh, she did well post-operative and she was discharged home subsequently. Um, this is another case, a uh, 57 year old uh, uh, male who had um, uh, infralateral STEMI. We had to put him on ECMO just for the sake of time. We had to put him on ECMO uh, and he, he was referred for surgery. He had diffuse disease. In fact, he was put on ECMO for two days. Um, uh, and then he, he was more or less stable and we took him for surgery. Uh, the surgery was successful, he was explanted uh, or the, can, uh, the ECMO was uh, removed uh, a few days later and was discharged home. Uh, just one more minute, please. One minute, please. Yeah, one more case. The slides. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, this is a 48-year-old male patient presented with uh, STEMI, um, uh, well, suggestive of left main uh, disease. Uh, ejection fraction initially was 17%. He was taken for primary PCI, and this is his angiogram. Um, sorry. Um, they're not in, but that's, that's the first, that, that's left main occluded. Sorry. Anyway, they managed to um, just balloon the left main with LAD and uh, circumflex, and he was put on ECMO, and he was taken immediately to the, to the, uh, to the uh, operating theater. He had uh, five grafts. In fact, he, he, we could uh, remove the ECMO, and the ejection fraction improved to 45%. The bottom line of the message that, uh, yes, surgery is not required immediately, or let's say uh, in all cases, and some of those cases, probably 5% of the cases, but uh, um, uh, we need to be there for uh, either complications or uh, um, lesions that cannot be handled by PCI or even uh, complications that require ECMOs, uh, um, uh, that require mechanical circulatory support. Um, and uh, that's the end of my talk. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr.